So Dada had to leave school after his first year, and he went to night school for a little bit, and then he had to, he took on a job. He took on a job at a chocolate factory. Now you know why we love sweets. <laughs> this is where this all started. God forbid the diabetes too. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit about the first sort of 20 years of his life. I think Alok will take, uh, Sneha will take us through the next section. So the 1940s, when India gains their independence, and World War II is going on with the Truman, and Nehru becomes the first Prime Minister of India. Rushmore is completed, and the UN is now formed. At this time, Baba is about 26, and he married Aji when he, um, she was actually 18, and they were married for 50 years. So, yeah. And they actually told us um, when he was working at the chocolate factory, he'd bring home chocolates for her all the time. <laughs> Being very sweet. Um, and they're actually married. They're actually related to each other <laughs> in the extended family tree. So, uh, oh, they're extended. They're um, related in an extended way. Um, so that makes me my own aunt. <laughs> Um, this is when he left the chocolate factory and he, wor he um, started working at the Telegraph. Um, he actually became the assistant chief superintendent. And this is in Bombay. Okay. Um, Akka was born in 50 or 42. Um, Baba was 27, Aji was 19. And they actually had a daughter two years later, um, Vidya. She had the theories before the vaccines. Um, she passed away when she was two. And even though Dada worked for the British government, he did support the um, independence movement. Which brings us to the 50s. And um, when this is when India becomes a republic, computers invented. Oh, Ward versus Brown, Rosa Parks, and my dad's born. <laughs> 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 Fifty thirty, thirty eight, and there's my dad. Um, so during this time, he lived in Bombay. He um, welcomed everybody in his house. Everybody lived at their house, um, coming through Bombay or coming to Bombay to work. Um, everybody obviously loved him because of his demeanor, his charisma. Um, and that brings us to the 60s. This is when Indira Gandhi becomes first woman prime minister. JFK is assassinated. And this is the time of peanuts and beetles. So this, he did get a promotion at the Telegraph, which was kind of a bittersweet promotion since he had to leave his family for two years to go to Madras. Um, Right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he um, helped out with a family business. Um, I think Dad can explain this better. Well, you know, uh, one of our relatives had a carbon dioxide business down in Hyderabad. Uh, basically, they were distributors for Vijay Merchant's carbon dioxide business. And uh, so he went down to help them out expand. Vijayawada and you know, that area in the Andhra Pradesh for about a year or so. Then he came back. Go on. So he came back to Bombay and he helped out um, with applications for Vijayaka to come to the United States in the late 60s. And then the 70s. So clearly at this point, Nada is. 50 something. He's, he's somewhere in his mid 50s. Dad has come to the US. People are coming in the door. There's all kinds of things going on at the same time. <laughs> but in the 70s, this is when Watergate happened. This is the Vietnam War. For those of us in our generation, that's a long time ago. Nada is 60 at this time. <laughs> so it just gives you some an order of attitude. So at this time, he leaves, and as Chikaraka had mentioned, 
he, was, uh, he went to Pune to continue the carbon dioxide business. Now we don't know, if somebody gets shipped from Bombay, the, the capital, effectively the business capital of India, to Pune, we don't really know how good he was at his job, at least as a businessman. So, so he goes to Pune and his son decides to get married. Surprisingly, my mother took pity on my father and they got married in the 70s. He truly becomes a Dada. And so Anupa was born in 1975, and now he becomes... 74, 75. We're talking about 96 years, give or take a year. I think we missed the order on a few of these things, too. So he truly becomes a Dada, and he actually makes his first trip to the U.S. in 75, and then travels around. So him and Aji see different places in the U.S., they go to New York, they see the Statue of Liberty, uh, and one of the stories that came out during our discussions with, with people was that uh, at this time, Shegaraka was doing well in school but had some challenges. And Dada was somebody... <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be as, as soft as possible on that while we have the paper up there with an F on it. <laughs> Uh, but what Shekhargaka remembers is that he would never leave your side. He was continue to be supportive. It didn't bother him. He said, you know, you keep working at it and it'll get better. So Dada was always there, not only for his children, but for everybody in the community. Um, this happened. This was a blip on the screen. So I, was, I was born in 77. Um, and then we hit the 80s. So in the 80s, if you recall, this is the last time that India won the Cricket World Cup. <laughs> First time, except recently. Yeah. Except recently. Uh, Ronald Reagan was president. Uh, the Rubik's Cube came out. We had the Mac, uh, and of course, Michael Jackson. So, from an order, just giving you a context of the time. In the 80s, Dada was an avid. He avidly watched CNN. If he didn't get his CNN, it was a bad day. <laughs> he, did, he did lots of reading. He listened to music. He was, involved, he was very into birds. So he would watch these birds at the bird feeder and go figure out what type of bird it was. So there was a lot of things that he kept himself very, very busy. At this time, in the, in the early 80s, Baby Atya, who is uh, effectively my aunt and is really Dada's daughter uh, for all intents and purposes, she connected with Dada and he took her on. And her son is here, Mihir is here, that, that came uh, to today's event. But she will actually be talking about her experience. We've got her recorded. She recorded a speech from India, and so we've got that recorded. We would go to India at this time, and Dada was the ultimate tour guide. We had horseback riding. We learned how to play the tabla. If I wanted thumbs up, he brought a truck of thumbs up. <laughs> I wanted cake, we went to the entire whole cake was there. So he was a phenomenal tour guide, and now it's coming back to hurt me as my dad does the same thing for my son. <laughs> so Dada was a matchmaker. And from what I understand, first matchmaking was with uh, Simakaki and Shigaraka. But from what I understand, he was a matchmaker. He, he meddled into other people's business as well <laughs> and helped with matchmaking in a number of different relationships. This is when he had his third and fourth grandchild, when Sneha and Salil, who's in the back, were born. Um, so this was in the 80s. Uh, and then this was also a tough period. So this is when Aji passed away. Um, and you know, one thing that Dada would often say, and he would say it to me as well, is it, he was just lonely. Uh, it changed his life a lot. He was just lonely. It, he, he, Aji passed on their 50th anniversary date. So they had exactly 50 years of marriage. Um, and so this was a tough period of time for him. So in the 90s, um, this is fairly recent, Nelson Mandela was freed. It's pretty amazing. Um, India is starting, it's got it becoming an economic powerhouse, if you will. Uh, you've got George Bush, Clinton, the Braves won the world championship, which was important. <laughs> so Dada moves to the U.S. and he starts a new life. Obviously at this point he, did, he was on his own and he decided with his two sons living in the U.S. it was best, best case was to go ahead and move here. He was a huge Braves fan. Um, and unfortunately we don't have Swami Kaka here today. But he charted every single pitch, every single hit, every single ball. When he could, he stayed focused on those games. And the great thing in baseball is there's 162 games. So he was completely occupied. <laughs> he served, uh, he was extremely helpful in the family. He helped, uh, effectively, he helped raise Sneha and Salil and was very in integral in their life growing up, um, almost playing the role of a man. 
He spent a lot of time with family. You'll see him in a couple of these pictures, but he was always around family, always asking anybody who came, and those of you who have interacted with that, always asking, who are you? You know, who, what's the lineage? I want to understand what the lineage is, because he really understood the, the true meaning of family. And he kept memoirs. So we actually have Dada's diaries from 1995 to 2005. And he wrote every single day in those diaries. And this one says, uh, you know, Shova and BJ celebrated my 80th birthday very lovingly. Uh, we went to Stone Mountain Restaurant. It was a, a charming place uh, and had lunch uh, on the front veranda facing the carving with four warriors on the mountain. The cuisine was nice and the salad had several items. It was a very happy meal. <laughs> that was his writing. <laughs> so he kept a diary every single day, and I mean, we will definitely cherish uh, those, those memories. So then came the 2000s, and this is a period of time when most of us, uh, you know, have interacted with Dada most recently, and it's what we remember. Um, and the 2000s, obviously, the first black president, we had Hurricane Katrina, the Twin Towers. There's interestingly, there's a picture with Dada with the Twin Towers in the back when you went to New York that we don't have in here. Um, Dada stayed strong. I mean, even especially in the early part of, uh, of the 2000s, he stayed strong. He was normal. He had everything was going for him. I mean, he, was, he, he looked like he could make it to 150. Uh, he truly had a strong body. And you can tell that from his athleticism and his background, he kept in shape. Fourth generation was born. Something many of us only can hope for um, is to be able to see a fourth generation. But my son was born in 2006. And so Sadada got a real chance to see that. Uh, he was very thankful. He was always at Thanksgiving, very much uh, appreciative of his life and appreciative of the length of his life. Uh, and, and he did hit a rough patch. And, and we did not want to spend a lot of time on that, but he did hit a rough patch in the last four or five years. And that's some of the memories that we have of Dada, uh, but it's definitely a very small portion of who he was. Uh, he passed away on the 27th, and, and what we'd like to say is he passed away with true dignity. Uh, and then I'll let you read this. So this is a quote from Abraham Lincoln, who we were joking at our house, I think Abraham Lincoln said this to Dada. That he was, he's been around for so long. Uh, but Dada truly believed this. He truly sucked the marrow out of life. Um, and we'll love him and we'll, we'll miss him dearly. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we celebrated his life in the proper way. So with that, I will turn it over to dad to say a few things. We're going to have um, the, the next things, we're going to do some reflections. So dad and Shagarka will say a few things. We've got um, some things to read that people have emailed in. Um, and then we've also got baby out there, his daughter, who sent in.